Good evening and welcome to tonight's public hearing. This hearing will include Columbus City Council's Health and Human Services, Finance and Workforce Development Committees. I'm Council Member Priscilla Tyson, President Pro Tem of City Council and the Chair of the Committees. Before we begin, please be aware that this hearing is being recorded for rebroadcast on CTV, the Columbus, Columbus Government Television Channel 3. The rebroadcast schedule is available at www.columbus.gov. Tonight's hearing is one of a series of bi-weekly committee hearings that I hold in order to review legislation in the, in the committees that I chair. This includes Health and Human Services, Finance, and the Workforce Development Committees. The goal of these hearings is to promote transparency and provide an opportunity for city residents to learn and to speak on legislation that impacts their lives. There will be on occasions on which a committee is not covered because legislation is not always scheduled for each committee. The intent of each hearing is to review legislation that will be on the City Council's agenda for the following two weeks. Tonight we'll hear information on legislation in Health and Human Services, Finance, and the Workforce Development Committees. The speakers presenting this evening include from the Treasurer's Office, Talia Brown, the Deputy Treasurer, the Auditor's Office, Robert McDaniel, Deputy Auditor, from the Department of Finance, Joe Lombardi, the Finance Director, from Columbus Public Health, Nancy Bechtel, the Assistant Health Commissioner and Chief Nursing Officer, and the Department of Development, Hannah Jones, Deputy Director of Community Development. I will begin with legislation in the Finance Committee by asking Deputy Treasurer Talia Brown to present. Good evening. Good evening, Councilmember Tyson. Thanks for having us. Uh, the Treasurer's Office has two small ordinances that will be coming before Council. Uh, they have to do with our e-payment services that we uh, authorized back in February. Uh, City Council authorized the passage of Ordinance 0301-2016, and uh, this was for e-payment services that we expect that most of city agencies wishing to accept online payments would decide to join with us. So we are excited about that, that the fire division uh, now wishes to modify our contract for e-payment services to include their division to allow them to be able to accept credit cards and online payments. This uh, ordinance is for $6,000 and this would allow them to modify our contract and the other ordinance, which is 1757-2016, uh, modifies our contract for banking services with Huntington Bank, and that will authorize the expenditure of 4,000 for, again, for the fire division, because they are joining our contract for e-payment solutions, and we are, uh, this will allow them to include the appropriation for that amount onto our contract so that they can, this will cover the fees. So our first ordinance covers the contract modification so that they can, uh, first data can come up with the solution to uh, fit their needs. And the second ordinance will authorize the expenditure to uh, accept, to cover the fees for the credit card payments. Thank you so very much and excited that the Fire Division of Fire will now be using um, e-payments. So thank you very much. I don't have any questions in regards to the legislation. Thank you. Our next presenter is going to be from the Otter's Office, Deputy Director Bob McDaniel. Good evening. Good evening, President Pro Tem Tyson. Tonight the Auditor's Office has two ordinances to come before Council. The first is 1566. 2016 is for a contract for outside auditing services by Premier Accounting Solutions for six audits of the city's subgrantees. Those six audits being performed will be Columbus Literary Council, Community Crime Patrol, Friends of the CRC, the Ohio Hispanic Coalition, St. Stephen's Community House, and Voice Corps Reading Service for a total expenditure of $29,145. This service was publicly advertised and one proposal was received. After review of the said proposal, the firm of Premier Accounting Solutions was chosen. These services are required annually. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, um, Mr. McDaniel. And so tell me, who determines which subgrantees are gonna be audited? 
um, there are many audits being performed by outside CPAs, of which we readily accept. Uh, there is a group that uh, don't have those services performed, and we go through the list of annually payments, and uh, I'm sure that Mr. Dorian and uh, someone else is working on this to decide who that is. I can get back to you on that. I'm not, it's, it's a group. All right, well, yes, you can let me know how they're selected. And these agencies are getting, it's important that we audit those or, these organizations because they're going to be receiving $787,000 in city funds. Yes. All right, thank you so much. You can go to the next piece of legislation. The second ordinance is 1724-2016. This is to enter into an agreement along with the Auditor of the State and Plant Moran for professional auditing services for calendar year 2016. This is to conduct an audit of the city's 2016 accounting records and financial statements. As, as we all know, all political subdivisions of Ohio are required to be audited by the Auditor of State or his designee. It should be noted that 15% of this contract will be subcontracted to a minority firm of a certified public accountant. This has been a subcontracting requirement by the Auditor's Office since 1985. This is to authorize the expenditure of $391,287 from the general fund. This agreement represents the fifth year of a five-year cycle. Happy to try answer any other additional questions. Thank you. I certainly appreciate the 15% going to a minority contractor. I think in the past we've used, is it John, we've used John Parms, I think, and I'm not sure who's going to be receiving this. Is it John again? i not sure? Okay. All right. Well, thank you um, for um, presenting the legislation tonight and um, look forward to finding out who will be the organization that which company will be getting the, um, the bid that's the 15%. Thank you. Thank you. I'm now going to just switch gears a little bit because I know finance is a lot of legislation and I don't want to keep people here um, at length. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to move to cover legislation in the Department of Development. So um, Hannah Jones, could you pl please share your legislation? Good evening, President Pro Tem Tyson. The only ordinance we have for you tonight is under the Workforce Development Committee. It's Ordinance 1444-2016. And while I describe it, I would like to invite the president of the Columbus Urban League Young Professionals Program, Ms. Habiba Kamagate, to the podium. Uh, this ordinance offers $10,000 to provide sponsorship support to the Columbus Urban League Young Professionals Program for their work they do in the community, and I will let the president provide details. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. The floor is yours. Hi, how are you, Councilwoman? Great, thank you. Good to see you. Um, I just want to quickly share a little bit about the Columbus Urban League Young Professionals. Um, we are a urban network of young professionals ages 21 to 40, and we function as an auxiliary group of the Columbus Urban League and also a chapter um, within the National Urban League Young Professionals representing the city of Columbus. Um, it's our mission to serve as a base of support for the Columbus Urban League, um, promote their initiatives and also their overall mission, um, in addition to supporting our local and national affiliate, um, the Columbus Urban League Young Professionals, also known as CULYP. It's our mission to serve as a vehicle of opportunity for YPs in the community, primarily YPs of color, um, those who are interested in serving the local community and engaging in opportunities, events, programs that encourage them to grow socially, professionally, personally, and civically. So I know this is falling into the Workforce Development Committee, and so when you're saying a vehicle of opportunity for service, do you, does, that, does, does it also include helping them, connecting them to employment opportunities and things of that nature? Absolutely. Um, specifically, we have our Personal and Professional Development Committee that primarily focuses on career development, um, giving YPs access to seasoned professionals in the community, um, entrepreneurship opportunities, panels, also connecting 
connecting them to career opportunities. That's mostly where our, our work lies. Okay, thank you. And also you're very much involved in community service too, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right, well thank you very much for coming down. It is important that um, we are a smart and open city. We wanna make sure that opportunities are for all to be able to be successful. Appreciate the work that's going on at the Urban League and that um, and your leadership with the young professionals because you also want to make sure that we keep you and others within our community. And uh, so thank you for coming down and sharing this. And this is for $10,000 for the next to support the development of our next generation of civic leaders. Thank you for coming down. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. All right. Well, then our next presenter will be from the from Columbus Public Health, I'm gonna ask Assistant Health Commissioner and Chief Nursing Officer Nancy Bechtel to present her legislation. Thank you, good evening, President Pro Tem. Good evening. So the first four pieces of legislation that I'll present tonight are related to our federal Healthy Start grant at Columbus Public Health. And as you know, every week in Franklin County, two to three families experience the death of a baby before his or her first birthday. Franklin County's infant mortality rate for 2015 was as high as the national rate from the early 1990s. The infant mortality rate for black infants is two and a half times that of white infants in Franklin counties. Not only are too many of our babies dying before they reach their first birthdays, but 13% of babies in Franklin County are born too early and 9% are born too small. So this grant that we get is to help address our infant mortality issue. The the Columbus Healthy Start program called My Baby and Me is to reduce disparities in infant mortality and to de decrease adverse perinatal outcomes by improving women's health. These outcomes are achieved by addressing social determinants of health, by promoting quality services, strengthening family resilience, achieving collective impact, and increasing accountability through quality improvement, performance monitoring, and valuation. Under our Healthy Start initiative called Eliminating Disparities in Perinatal Health, Columbus Public Health aligned with four other local care providers that provide comprehensive case management and care for at-risk moms and families. These partners include the Moms to Be program in affiliation with the Ohio State University, Mount Carmel Health Systems Welcome Home program, Ohio Health's Wellness on Wheels prenatal program, and Nationwide Children's Hospital. The My Baby and Me program works to eliminate maternal child health disparities, especially among non-Hispanic black women, but will serve any woman in Franklin County who wants these services. So as I go through the legislation, grant funds allocated specifically to Ohio Health and Mount Carmel Health in this program allow pregnant women to be enrolled through their OB providers in supportive home visiting services prior to delivery in order to develop a healthy baby. So the first piece of legislation is ordinance number 1792-2016. <clears throat> and this is to allow Columbus Public Health to accept additional funding from the US Department of Health and Human Services in the amount of $154,458 to provide additional services under the Healthy Start program for the period of November 1st, 2015 through October 31st, 2016. And it's just additional carryover monies that they're allowing us to have from last year. Can you share the project communities, please, for this legislation? The project communities where this money will be spent. Um, the, the Healthy Start grant program enables Columbus Public Health to conduct care coordination in the project area neighborhoods of Franklin County focusing primarily on perinatal and infant clients and their families. So the project neighborhood is really all of Franklin County. We focus extensively on the 10 zip codes with the highest disparity in black infant mortality rates. Thank you. The next piece of legislation is related to the grant that we have with Mount Carmel and it's ordinance number 1853-2016. This ordinance authorizes the Board of Health to enter into a contract with Mount Carmel Hospital in the amount of $65,000 for the provision of participant coordinated services for the period of November 1st, 2015 through October 31st, 2016. Ordinance 0386-2016 authorized the Board of Health to modify EL017691 in the amount of $32,500. 
This ordinance is needed to increase contract PO010577 in the amount of $3,000 for a total contract amount not to exceed $100,500 with Mount Carmel Hospital. The next ordinance is the same um, as far as allowing Ohio Health to provide prenatal services for our clients. Ordinance 2746-2015 Authorize the Board of Health to enter into a contract with Ohio Health in the amount of $130,000 for the provision of participant coordination services for the period of November 1, 2015 through October 31, 2016. This ordinance is needed to increase contract PO000940 in the amount of $3,000 for a total contract amount not to exceed $133,000 with Ohio Health. <clears throat> the next um, ordinance is ordinance number 1855-2016, and this is to allow us to implement a registry that will collect data for our Healthy Start grant. The Board of Health, and this is ordinance number 1855-2016, the Board of Health has been awarded the grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Services for the Healthy Start program. We've been designated as the primary grantee agency administrator for the Healthy Start grant program in Franklin County. The grant funds awarded provide for a contract with Challenger Soft Database Company to meet the various reporting requirements for the Healthy Start grant program in an amount not to exceed $77,500. And we didn't put this out for a bid because the vendor currently, this vendor particularly, currently maintains the database for 37 other Healthy Start programs across the country, which allows for a seamless and cost-effective integration of our Healthy Start grant with the federal program. Thank you. And so the grant for the $154,000 that we just talked about at the very beginning, we're receiving the grant. Those dollars are then going to, are going to be used to modify those other two contracts. Is that correct? Yes. Right, and also, is that also going to be used to, because really this is only 3000 3000 and then we, that funding going to also support the funding for the 77000 or is that a separate grant? Um. The, those are separate. The okay. 154000 is carryover. I'm sorry, carryover from last year okay. that they're giving them back to us as long as we implement it into current program services. So these are actually four different pieces of legislation. All right. And I would just like to say that the My Baby and Me services provide care for infants up to age two years of age and prenatally, again, to help that we have a healthy mom and baby. And any women who are interested in enrolling in our program can call our maternal child health phone line at 614-724-BABY. And we'll be glad to get them enrolled in the program. Thank you, Nancy. And we really do want our um, mothers who are, or, or women who are thinking about having a baby, as well as those who are pregnant to come utilize our services, because we certainly want, their, want them to have a healthy baby. So thank you for sharing this legislation. So the next um, legislation that we put forward with you tonight is ordinance number 1835-2016. Columbus Public Health has been awarded a grant from Gilead Sciences Incorporated. This ordinance is needed to accept and appropriate $252,107 in grant money to fund the FOCUS Hep C grant program for the period June 30th, 2016 through May 31st, 2017. The FOCUS Hep C grant program will allow Columbus Public Health to seek to reduce morbidity and mortality associated with hepatitis C. This grant will allow us to do additional help hepatitis C screening through our sexual health clinic and our alcohol and other drug clinic. Persons who screen positive for hepatitis C through these programs will be referred to a linkage for care specialist. The client will be assessed for current health insurance status and enrolled in any available programs, including Medicare and Medicaid. The client will also be assessed for readiness to be linked to care. Persons who are ready will be referred to available infectious disease specialists. So this grant will allow us to, to treat and do case management for clients with hepatitis C that we've never been able to do before. 
Congratulations on receiving this grant. Will you also be able to use these dollars at Equitas when we, on the Saturday programs that? We, we will make sure that all the programs kind of tie together, but these dollars will actually help us do case management through Columbus Public Health for a group of clients that Equitas may not serve. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so the next, I don't know if you want information on hepatitis C, that's why I'm pausing. Yes. Um, we think that this program will help us serve at least 1,225 persons. Thank you. The next ordinance that we present here tonight is ordinance number 1841-2016. And this is a supplemental grant award for our Ryan White HIV Care Part A program. So Columbus Public Health has been awarded a grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Ordinance 0238-2016 authorized the, exception, the acceptance and appropriation of $4 million $10,911 in grant money. This ordinance is needed to accept and appropriate an additional $537,518 in grant monies to fund the Ryan White HIV Care Part A grant program for the period of March 1, 2016 through February 28, 2017. The HIV Care Part A grant's purpose is to improve access to medical care for persons living with HIV or AIDS living in Central Ohio. The goal is that each client will achieve viral suppression, which improves their quality of life and reduces the risk of spreading the infection. This grant will enhance medical services, both somatic and behavioral health. It will pay for HIV-related doctor's visits, mental health services, substance abuse services, and other services allowable by the grant. It will also strengthen the case management and linkage to care elements of our work. In 2015, the Ryan White Part A program through Columbus Public Health served 2,400 people living with HIV in Central Ohio. Thank you. These dollars are critically needed in our community. And um, I know that after the hearing that we had in April, we certainly have continue to have an increase in HIV numbers, especially around um, African-American males. And hopefully um, we'll be able to, um, this group of people will be able to utilize these services um, to help them to leave, live healthier lives, in case they're 18 to 24 and you already have HIV. Um, you're going to live a lifetime with that unless it's a cure comes up. And so certainly want to be able to link them to those, these critical services to move them forward. Um, uh, I just came back from a conference, too, that was focused on um, women with, HI, with HIV and AIDS and how important it is for individuals to be able to get these services. And the majority of them have received HIV and AIDS from their um, male partner, the majority of them. So, um, so this is just really important that we get these dollars and get people um, connected to the services. And so if individuals wanted to um, receive these services, how could they do that? They just need to contact the health department. And I would really encourage folks to get tested because we know that a lot of people walk around with HIV and not, are not even aware that they're infected. And the earlier that they can get screened and get on to treatment, the longer and healthier outcome that they'll have. All right. Thank you so very much. All right. And so now we're going to move to our fin the Finance Committee and Finance Director Joe Lombardi. Good evening, Joe. Good evening, President Pro Tem Tyson. Uh, the Finance Department has several uh, pieces of legislation that will be um, under consideration for Council. Uh, we'll, we'll try to uh, go through these as, as fast as possible for you this evening. Uh, we have four resolutions that will be coming. Uh, those resolutions are 0146X, 147X, 148X and 149X 2016. And these are the resolutions for the upcoming voted bond package. Um, these are required by, um, um, by process that we will be putting these on and they are for the vo four voted bond package. Um, dollar figures of 70 million for, or sorry, 70,000 for 70 million. 
<laughs> for um, the safety and safety and health, 110 million for recreation and parks, 310 million for streets and highways and refuse collection, and 460 million for water, power, sanitary sewer, and storm sewers. What would the impact be if the voters decided to reject this? Well, if the voters would reject this, then uh, we would have to either do as much as we can on unvoted, which we probably wouldn't have the capacity to do that. So some of our projects would have to be stalled until such time that we would have another voted bond package back on the ballot. So um, without a voted bond package, um, it's going to be very difficult for us to continue our CIP program in the city. Well, again, just, I, I'm glad you shared that because we certainly would want, um, this is critically important for the growth of our city. Um, we have not asked for a property tax increase and um, Mr. Dorian would say 50 years or more and we don't plan on doing it now, but it's critically important that um, that the voters would support these bond, the bond package so that we can continue to do um, great work in all the neighborhoods within the city of Columbus. And Correct. So, Thank Correct. you for that. Mm -hmm. Next ordinance is 1620-2016. This is to authorize the finance and management director to enter into one universal term contract for the option to purchase waste identification, cleanup and disposable services with environmental remediation contractor LLC, and to authorize the expenditure of $1 to establish the contract from the general fund. Uh, this contract will be a citywide contract that will allow city agencies to use the company for cleanup of, of hazardous and non-hazardous waste, um, such as emergency spill response for sludge, petroleum, chemical, and other wastes. Uh, this is a citywide contract uh, that all agencies would use. Thank you. So all agencies are going to use this. Thank you. The next uh, ordinance is 1642-2016, and this is to authorize the finance management director to enter into four contracts for the option to purchase CNG-powered side loader refuse trucks with ESC Corporation doing business as Columbus Peterbilt and with Truck Country of Indiana Stoops Freightliner Quality Trailer and to authorize the expenditure of $4 to establish these contracts and to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the city code. And so the, the reason for the, the waiver is uh, to allow the, the city um, refuse department and the fleet management division to have more flexibility and opportunity to review newer equipment and newer technology. We, we bid these out as an RFP. In the code, it does not allow for us to purchase uh, vehicles or goods through an RFP process. But through this process, we were able to um, evaluate two companies that offered various technologies and various um, cab and chassis uh, bodies um, that were all uniquely different. So we are going to purchase in 2016 and 17, we are going to purchase um, uh, I think it's 16 total vehicles that we're going to split amongst the four contracts. And during those year, year and a half, two year period, we're going to evaluate which one of those uh, refuse trucks better serves our needs. And then in 18, that is the truck we will start to purchase uh, for the city of Columbus. So this is going to give us an opportunity to see some technology for our side loading refuse trucks that we have not seen before here in the city of Columbus. So we're really looking forward to this evaluation of these uh, of these trucks once we get them delivered. Thank you for going into more detail about that. I was certainly going to ask those questions. And um, I do appreciate that you did go through an RFP process and to look at new ways of using technology that the hopes that because they're CNG vehicles that they would save us money down the road and to get a feel for what um, the employees like in terms of which which of these vehicles and then utilize the, their knowledge to help us for 2018. That's so correct. I appreciate you thinking outside the box with that and uh, look forward to um, hearing which of the vehicles over the next couple of years uh, are the best for um, not only for the, our staff but also um, for um, the residents of our city. So I appreciate you doing that and the, um, 
the thoughtful process that the, that the five member committee went through to be able to, to do this work. And again, really appreciate CNG. And do you think that the CNG vehicles are working well for us at this point? Yes, they are. Um, and, and actually, we're, we have two CNG fueling stations, and we're in the process of designing two more. So we should have them at all four corners of the city uh, in the near future. Um, and so it'll be a wonderful um, ability for us to have these filling stations and that'll enable us to buy more CNG vehicles. All right, thank you very much. The next ordinance is 1682-2016 and this is to authorize the finance management director to enter into a contract for the option to purchase McAvee Security Products and Solutions with SHI International Corp and to authorize the expenditure of $1 to establish these, this contract. Uh, this contract will, is primarily used by our Department of Technology and it is for McAfee Security Products, which is virus and internet security program that we use throughout the city. And uh, this is just to set up in a, a universal term contract so the Department of Technology can continue to purchase that um, most needed uh, virus and internet security um, program. Looking at an estimated expenditure about seventy five thousand. About seventy five thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Okay, thank you. The next ordinance is sixteen ninety two two thousand and sixteen to authorize the finance and management director to enter into a UTC contract for the option to purchase voice, data, and video cabling hardware and services with Strategic Communications LLC, and to authorize the expenditure of one dollar to establish this contract. Uh, again, this uh, contract is mostly for the Department of Technology, and this would allow them to purchase um, hardware and, and services for our telephones, our computers, um, our video, um, anything that's technology-related, uh, audiovisual, um, or any kind of technology that would require hardware, cable, um, all the good parts and pieces that uh, they know more about than I do. The expenditure? The uh, annual expenditure on that is uh, $300,000 a year. Thank you. Next ordinance is 1710-2016, and this is to authorize the finance and management director to enter into one universal term contract for the option to purchase overhead door parts with Kelly and Askew to authorize the expenditure of $1 to establish a contract and to waive the competitive bidding provisions of Chapter 329. Uh, the reason why we are waiving the regulations of, of the bid is in the bid specifications, we ask for a full line catalog from each company. Uh, the company that we're awarding to um, only submitted a, um, a small portion of what we needed, and, and the second low bid was uh, non-responsive to the bid, so we could not go with the second low bid, so we went back to the first bidder and we asked them to, we negotiated with them to give us a full line catalog, and which they, they did. And so this will allow our um, city end users to use a full line of a catalog with uh, for overhead, overhead door parts. And um, these are all your garage doors at the fire stations and, and here at City Hall. And um, this will enable them to have more ability to purchase those parts. Uh, right. The annual expenditure on that is about $40,000 a year. The next ordinance is 1719-2016. This is to authorize the finance management director to establish various purchase orders for automotive parts, supplies, and services for the fleet management divisions per the terms and conditions of already established universal term contracts and authorize the expenditure of $2,450,000 from the fleet management fund. Um, this contract allows us to um, purchase uh, various fleet parts and uh, tires and also uh, helps with our body shop services for collisions. Uh, we have three separate contracts for that collision. Uh, we have uh, various contracts for our parts. Uh, places that we're familiar with are, are like Napa. Um, we also have um, Reichert, Skinner Diesel Services, uh, Sumpkin Corporation, Rush Truck Centers of Ohio, Bob Summerall Tire, and Glockner Oil. So this is for all the 
inventory that is used at our fleet management division to continue to repair our city vehicles, including uh, fire uh, trucks and uh, police vehicles. Thank you. We have been really aggressive in recent years with the replacement of our city vehicles. Has that translated to any realized savings in parts and upkeep? Yeah, so our, our uh, annual inventory, um, I, I believe the last I heard was we had somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 1.8 million at one point in time, and, and we're down below a million dollars in inventory. So with, with us changing out our vehicles on a regular basis, we're able to, to uh, lower our cost on our inventory. Thank you. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1722-2016, and this is to authorize the finance and management on behalf of the city to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Boys and Girls Club of Columbus, Inc., regarding the plans and commitments of the parties relating to the property located at 115 Gift Street, and to authorize the director to execute those documents necessary to release the city's reversionary interest in said property. That was a lot. So. The Columbus uh, conveyed property uh, per ordinance 1401-83 and the deed uh, to the Boys and Girls Club of Columbus. And the deed included a reverter that uh, basically what, what happens there, if that property is not used for a benevolent uh, purpose, then the city would revert back to the city. Um, due to some changes in demographics and programs that are needed in the Franklinton neighborhood, uh, the Boys and Girls Club wishes to sell the property at 115 Gift Street and move into the operations of 85, 85 Clarendon Avenue to better serve the needs of both Franklinton and the Hilltop neighborhoods. This is the J. Ashburn Center. Uh, the city desires uh, to support this move, and this ordinance is uh, doing a memorandum of understanding to take that reverter out of that deed. Um, and there are some um, revisions in that, um, provisions in that, MOU that says if, if, if they're not continuing to do the programs that um, we, we ask them to do, then we, we have the right to take that back from them. So we're just reverting from the Boys and Girls Club. But the Memorandum of Understanding says you must continue to provide uh, programs that are essential to that neighborhood. Okay, I think I have to remember I had some questions on this. That one, what was the, um, so how's this deal going to work? Because I know we're looking at a reverter clause here, but mm -hmm. I ask that what's the cost that, um, what was the appraisal price of the property on Gift Street? So the Gift Street property is, is going to be sold for approximately $510,000. Um, and there's a, an appraisal uh, right now in the Jay Ashburn Center. And I believe um, the last appraisal we've gotten was around 900000 um, but that is, but we we think that it uh, the appraisal that we had, which was less than that, um, is the is the appraisal that is probably the one we should use. But right now, the appraisal that we have gotten was nine hundred thousand dollars for the J Ashburn. Okay, so but the property on Gift Street, what was the appraisal on that? That was five hundred and ten thousand dollars. So that's the that's appraisal. what they want to sell it for. Mm -hmm. And the, so we're going to sell it for the amount of the appraisal. Yes, ma'am. And that five hundred and ten thousand is going to go into the purchase of the J. Ashburn. That is correct. And you're saying that's nine hundred thousand or that's something? This, yes, that was the last we heard. It is, as you know, it's in receivership. So we're working with the courts, and we're working with the Franklin County Sheriff's Office because there may be a sheriff sale for that um, the J. Ashburn. And so with that, then Jay Ashburn obviously will have to come up with the additional dollars to be able to purchase this building. That's correct. Besides that. And I know they wanted to remodel the building. All that will be, they'll figure that out. But our 510000 is going to, to help That's support the purchase of this building. That is correct. Okay. And then um, the, and so you're saying the reversionary clause would be it's on the Gift Street property, on the Gift Street property. So, and then we're taking it off of that, and then they're going to take the full proceeds of those dollars. So we're supporting the sale. We're supporting them to continue to do services on the west side with the $510,000. That is correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
The next ordinance is Ordinance 1728-2016. This is to authorize and direct the finance and management director to issue purchase orders up to $100,000 for computer parts and accessories with Insight Public Sector for various city agencies from an existing Cooperative State of Ohio term contract established for such purposes by the State of Ohio Department of Administrative Services. This contract, uh, we, we have a contract for um, these parts, um, these computer parts. However, all the parts are not, um, are not covered in our contract. So we um, are, are entering into this contract to allow our city agencies to purchase uh, computer parts that aren't covered under our current uh, UTC. And in, I think it was in 1987, I think it's ordinance 582-1987, it authorized uh, city agencies to purchase off a state contract. So this is a cooperative bid that they um, have entered into and then we're, we're just going to purchase the parts from, from that contract. The, this ordinance, I know, states that the current contract for computer parts and, assess and accessories does not meet the current needs from the city. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So this will just have the ability for us to, to buy the parts that aren't on our current contract. They're not on our current contract. That's correct. All right. Thank you. The next ordinance is 1744-2016. This is to authorize the finance and management to execute those documents necessary to amend a lease with the Board of, Con with the Board of Concord Township Trustees for a one-year lease extension. Um, in June of 2015, the city purchased several parcels located at home in Dublin Roads in Delaware County uh, to be used for the potential site of the city's fourth water plant. Uh, this was currently um, this was currently property the state of Ohio use in the Department of Youth Services, the Scioto Juvenile Correction Facility. Uh, one of those parcels that were purchased uh, by the city uh, was lease to uh, the town, the Concord Township, um, it, they have a fire station on, on that piece of property and they're in the uh, process of building a new fire station, but they have been delayed in that process. So we are going to extend their lease for one more year to allow them to continue to have their fire station on that piece of property. Thank you. Next ordinance is 1754-2016, and this is to authorize the finance management director to issue purchase orders for purchase order for Scott Safety for the Division of Fire for the option to purchase self-contained breathing apparatuses and related software to waive the, the competitive bidding requirements of City Code 329 and to authorize the expenditure of one dollar to establish the contract. Again, uh, just like with the refuse trucks, um, we wanted to be able to have an opportunity to evaluate various equipment and technology that is out there with these self-contained breathing apparatuses that our firefighters use um, on a daily basis when they go into fires. And so we did an RFP process to allow us to look at different uh, technologies. And as part of this award, we are also going to be able to implement um, a incident command suite. It's a program that allows us to have real-time on-scene resources at the event. Um, so I think that's gonna be a very helpful tool for our firefighters when they're at a fire and, and on the scene. And so I, again, this was a, uh, another great opportunity for us to use an RFP process to find out uh, what's new out there and what's, what's better and what are some of the best practices that are being used. Thank you. And how frequently does the fire division replace its um, SCBA equipment for firefighters? That's a good question. I, 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 I'm not sure of that answer, but we can get back to you on that. Okay, that would be great. And I'm going to go back to the last piece of legislation real quick and ask you a question about when do you think the start date's going to then be for the city's fourth water treatment plant since we just gave the extension? Yes, I, I don't know when that plan was um, for that plan. I think we wanted to make sure that we secured land. Um, it was part of their um, water, I think, is beyond 2000 okay. uh, plan. But um, I can certainly talk with my colleagues over in DPU and get back to you on that. Okay, thank you. The next ordinance is 1764-2016, and this is to authorize the finance and management director to enter into one universal term contract 
for the purchase of plumbing supplies with, supplies with Granger and to authorize the expenditure of $1 to establish this contract. Uh, this uh, ordinance will allow us to establish a contract for plumbing supplies that are used throughout the city for different city agencies, including uh, facilities management for various uh, plumbing uh, maintenance and repairs. Uh, the estimated cost on uh, this contract annually is about $750,000, and it is used citywide by all agencies. Okay, I have another question just around Granger because I know we gave him another contract earlier in this year for, mm -hmm. and that was like, I think there were like 63 bidders or something like that, and only one person responded, mm -hmm. which was Granger. Mm -hmm. And so now we're looking at another contract with them for um, $750,000, and just again we had really very low bid participation again um 63 bids solicited and only two bids submitted mm -hmm. so can you just kind of share i mean i know we're going out with big bids i don't know why um only a couple come back do you want to share information about that with me yeah the only thing that i i can share with you on that is that um you know obviously 63 bids were solicited for opportunity um it might be the capacity of that bid may be too large for some of the uh, a smaller company to handle um in in this case um obviously granger was the lowest bid on this um and the most responsive lowest bid and um i mean we we can look into this um for you and get back to you, but uh, my guess is it's a large contract and it's, it's probably to, to be able for the city to purchase what they needed off of that contract. You know, someone like a Granger is probably um, going to have a little bit more capacity to bid on something of that nature. Okay, because that means between the two bids, they're basically $1.5 million and it's only one or two people can even submitted, but I don't think I don't think anyone submitted um, on the first one. Maybe the only one, but so anyway, just be nice to just have an understanding about Granger because it seems to me that um, the bids are pretty high, and that maybe that's what they have to be. But just kind of get, if you get back with me on the, this particular piece of legislation, it'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Next ordinance is Ordinance 1772-2016, uh, authorized the finance and management director on behalf of Fleet Management Division to establish purchase orders with various vendors for purchase of shuttle, trailer, and upfitting of several city vehicles, and to authorize the appropriation and expenditure of $214,961.16 from the Special Income Tax Fund. Um, this is our ongoing um, upfitting of vehicles from uh, for various. Uh, we have a uh, we have trailers. Uh, we have a retrofit of a prisoner transport van, salt spreaders, um, dump body um, that we are going to upfit. Um, this con this um, excuse me. This ordinance also establishes an auditor certificate for um, $78,816.96. And we are currently looking at upfitting our police motorcycles with sidecars. And we will be uh, doing a competitive bid for those sidecars. So we're just establishing the money uh, on an auditor certificate, but these will be uh, competitively bid. Thank you. The next ordinance is Ordinance 1779-2016, authorized the Finance and Management Director to enter into one contract for the option to purchase trans, transit van upfitting retrofitting services with PAR public safety equipment to authorize the expenditure of $1 to establish this contract. Uh, just as I said in the previous ordinance, uh, this is to set up the um, UTC with PAR public safety for the upfitting of um, mostly these are transit uh, vans for police. These are prisoner transit vans, or we used to call them paddy wagons. That is, is what they are now. They're prisoner transit vans. So that is uh, the contract to upfit those. The next ordinance is 1786-2016. This is to authorize the finance and management director to contract with Vinamaya Inc. for the continuation of hosted software solutions and professional services related to the V Marketplace. 
to authorize the expenditure of up to $173,800 from the general fund in the way of the competitive bidding requirements of the Columbus City Code. Um, the V Marketplace is an electronic catalog administered by the purchasing office. Um, it is made available to all city staff as part of our procurement process. And there's about 2 million distinct items in that catalog. Uh, the original contract um, with Vinamaya uh, was awarded um, back in 2013. Uh, Vinamaya was presented as a potential subcontractor uh, during the request for proposal phase for the financial planning system. And although their general contractor did not get the job, the, the evaluation team of the city felt that they had a very unique um, technology that we could use. So we, um, back in 2013, we, we made an award to Vinamaya to do the um, V Market, uh, V Marketplace um, that we are currently using this contract, this ordinance extends that contract. Um, for I think it's one one additional year. Thank you. I don't have any questions on that. Ordinance 1789-2016 is authorized the director of finance, finance and management to enter into a contract for the option to purchase power transmission parts and related items with applied industrial technologies and authorize the expenditure of one dollar to establish, establish the contract. Uh, this contract will allow um, city agencies to purchase parts that are maintained pumps and engines and, and other equipment that are throughout the city facilities. Um, the annual expenditure on this contract is $70,000. Next ordinance is 1794-2016, authorized the finance management director to enter into a universal term contract for the option to purchase EMC equipment and services with Advisex Technologies to authorize the expenditure of $1 to establish this contract. Um, this contract is mostly used by our Department of Technology, and this is for equipment and services for our servers, um, our storage area network environment. Um, these are um, for, I believe, parts and services and equipment for those services, or for those servers. Ordinance 1827-2016 authorized the finance and management director to enter into one contract for the option to purchase protective footwear with Granger Inc. to authorize the expenditure of $1 to establish a contract. Um, this is uh, an option for a universal term contract for the protective footwear that our employees use on a day-to-day -day basis, steel-toed boots. Um, any kind of uh, protective um, footwear that they may need out on their jobs. So this is a, a contract so that they can buy those uh, protective footwear. Uh, the annual expenditure on this is uh, $250,000. The next ordinance is Ordinance uh, 1834-2016, authorized the Finance and Management Director to enter into one contract for the option to purchase footwear with outdoor source to authorize the expenditure of $1 to establish this contract. Um, just like the other contract, uh, however, this one is primarily used for the Department of Public Utilities. Uh, many of their um, needs for their um, footwear are different than uh, most city agencies, especially in our um, division of sewers and drains, in our division of power. Um, so we, we establish a different contract for the Department of Pub Public Utilities needs on, on their footwear needs. Next, con uh, next ordinance is 1840-2016, authorized the Finance Management Director to enter into two contracts for the option to purchase wearing apparel with Koppel Advertising and Challenger Team Wear and authorize the expenditure of $2 to establish the contract uh, to establish these contracts. Uh, this is uh, a, a UTC for wearing apparel for the employees of the Recreation and Parks Department for the both the forestry section and the recreation staff. The estimated to be twenty-five thousand. Uh, twenty-five, uh, twenty-five thousand. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Next ordinance is 1849-2016 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to enter into one universal term contract for the option to purchase Hewlett Packard printer equipment with Canon 4 Inc. 
to authorize the expenditure of $1 to establish this contract. Uh, this uh, UTC is um, to set up for um, the printer, uh, Hewlett Packard printer needs uh, for both uh, the printer supplies and maintenance on, on those uh, printers that are Hewlett Packard. This is for $250,000. $250,000 annual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next ordinance is 1878-2016, and this is to authorize the finance management director to modify an existing design service contract on behalf of the Office of Construction Management with Star Consultants, Inc. Oh. is to amend the 2016 capital improvement budget to authorize the city auditor to transfer funds within the construction management capital improvement fund and to authorize the expenditure of $460,084 from the construction management capital improvement fund. Uh, this ordinance authorizes uh, the modification of an existing contract with Star Consultants uh, to provide additional design services for the Columbus Public Health HVAC renovations. Uh, during the initial design phase, uh, th there were um, items that um, we felt that could be improved and upgraded, so we had asked them to do some more design work on, especially with the backup HVAC is. As you know, we had an issue earlier in the year. Uh, so this is to allow them for some additional design work in, on that project. And the final ordinance for the evening is 1879-2016 to authorize the finance and management director to enter into contract director, on behalf of- Director, can I ask you, can we oh, just go I'm back sorry. to the HV? Yes. The HVAC at Columbus Public Health. So I know that we had a chiller that went out earlier this year. We we um, took care of that, or, or taking care of that, I should say. Um, can you talk about the need to update the HVAC system at our Parsons at, at the Columbus Public Health, please? Yeah, so our, our public health department, as you, as you well know, is, a, is an older building, and um, there are times where sometimes the, the heating and, and cooling in one area is not heating and cooling in other areas, and so you have a, a building that may be a little warm on one side and a little cool on the next. So um, we are looking at a complete um, upgrade of that HVAC system um, so that, um, you know, obviously it'd be comfortable not only for our workers, but for our customers who, who come in there every day and use, our, use that facility. And so this will help us with um, to better manage the, the HVAC system at that location. Next ordinance is 1879-2016 to authorize the finance management director to enter into contract on behalf of the Office of Construction Management with Farber Corporation. Um, this in the amount of $208,400. Um, this is to um, replace the heat pumps and other associated HVAC equipment in a city facility located at 1393 East Broad. Um, this is the model neighborhoods uh, building. Uh, again, this is a, um, an older building um, that works on heat pumps and um, during um, an evaluation, uh, we, we felt that it was needed to upgrade the HVAC um, equipment and the heat pumps at that location. This is where our um, Office of Diversity and Inclusion is, is housed. And I, I'm not sure who else is housed in there. Uh, but it, again, it's it's just like we are doing with the health department. We are trying to trying to upgrade those facilities. And thank you for sharing what's in the building. I also think that I thought the neighborhood pride office is also there for that community. So um, that, that building yes. does play a you know a great role for the residents of our city mm -hmm. to be able to find out about the services through the neighborhood pride as well as um, the new the office of diversity and inclusion, yes. I want to say ABACO, which was the name that it used to be, um, certainly um, in a way to be able to help um, minority and small businesses get the skill sets and the services they need to move their business forward. Mm -hmm. So it does play a, um, a crucial role in, in, in with our city and making sure services are available to our residents. And also this is the building itself. I mean, right. it's a well-known building and certainly uh, I think it's a, a building that's significant to the Near East Side, so yes. And, and just as a um, heads up, um, we, we have a draft ordinance. There is no number associated with it, and I, I don't believe we'll have another hearing before it comes on city council, so I'd just like to brief you on that very quickly this evening. Um, 
as you know, we'll, we're having a special election on August 2nd, and any time a political subdivision has a, an election, uh, a special election or a general election or a primary election, um, we are required to pay for that uh, election uh, the, for the polling workers. And, and typically, um, in the past, um, we, we would um, pay that through the withholding of some of our property tax um, that comes back to us from Franklin County. Um, just recently, um, the city auditor has received an email uh, from the Franklin County um, Board of Elections saying that we must pay 65% um, of the estimated cost of that special election now as opposed to after the fact. That is going to be a bill of about $664,000. Um, then the remainder will be post-election um, estimated at three, uh, 335000 uh, we will be presenting an ordinance uh, in, in the amount of $1.22 million um, in the, probably in the next uh, couple council meetings um, for those costs for that special election and any associated cost uh, with that election. Um, and so I just wanted to, to advise you that, that that may become, I don't have an ordinance number, but I don't think we're going to have a hearing before it, it hits an, uh, an agenda. So. If you have any questions, uh, either I can help you or uh, Mr. McDaniel can help you. Um, thank you, Director. And certainly just um, thank you for providing that information um, at tonight's hearing so that when, it's, when the legislation is written that we will have already had a discussion on it. And certainly we know that, um, like I said, I think you've, you've shared why we have to have it. And, um, and we do have to pay for elections, and this is one that we have to pay for. And, and so you, uh, I guess we'll be seeing an ordinance come through for about $664,000 to be able to let our residents be able to vote on August the 2nd. Okay. Mr. McDaniel, do you have anything you want to add to that? Seeing none. All right. Thank you, Director Lombardi. <laughs> Thank you, Director Lombardi. All right, so I hope this evening's hearing has provided insight into the programs and community initiatives from Columbus Public Health and the Department of Development, as well as the finance-related legislation that is necessary to support our ongoing operations. As residents, these hearings are an opportunity for you to learn and become engaged in issues that are presented. Before I conclude tonight's hearing, I want to thank the Treasurer's Office, Talia Brown, the Deputy, Deputy Treasurer. I also want to thank from the Auditor's Office, Direct Bob McDaniel, Deputy Auditor, from the Department of Finance, Director Joe Lombardi. From Columbus Public Health, Nancy M. Bechtel, Health Assistant Health Commissioner and Chief Nursing Officer. And then from the Department of Development, Hannah R. Jones, the Deputy Director of Community Development. I also want to always thank my fellow council members and their staffs who really work hard to serve this community. I also want to thank City Council's Legislative Research Office, especially Michael Kessler, who's, in the, who's here tonight. Thank you, Michael, for being here, who leads the Legislative Research Team. Andrew Dwyer, who staffs Health and Human Services and Workforce Development, and Matt Erickson, who staffs finance, as well as Brendan Kelly from Legislative Affairs. And I see Aaron's in the um, council chambers tonight, too. Hi, good evening, Aaron. And so my staff, Nicole Harper and Carl Williams, and the hardworking team of CTV who make these hearings possible. And finally, the residents of Columbus who make our city the best place to in the country to live, work, and to raise a family. And thank you very much, and the hearing is adjourned. <laughs>